today on Ask This Old House. There's one project in particular that I wrote in about, a gutter problem here. Oh yeah, you definitely have a gutter problem. You have an outlet for a downspout, uh, then again, no downspout. Think you've seen everything in gutters? Well, think again. I'm taking my cues from the desert as I design a new front yard in Phoenix. So your yard is very flat, and what we want to do is mimic the foothills of the mountains nearby. So we're going to create these mounds just to add some undulation to your landscape. And after living with technology from Future House for a year, I'll show you what we learned. This is a typical spike right here, just for the coffee maker. Hi there, I'm Kevin O'Connor, and welcome back to Ask This Old House, where we love getting your questions about your houses. So make sure you keep your letters and your emails coming. The guys are standing by. Hey, Roger. Hey, Kevin. Right. You seen Jen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing a story on uh, actually landscaping in the desert, so she's actually going to the desert. She's on a flight right now to Arizona. Really? Oh, I yeah. wanted to warn her about the jumping cactus. Uh, uh, about the what? Jumping cactus. Come on. The what? It's a form of cactus that is attracted to water, which who has a lot of water in the bodies? We do. Okay, has little tendrils on it that pierce the skin and go into your skin and lock in place. Are you telling me this thing like when you're walking by, it just reaches out and grabs you? It can move and grab you. Well, what do you do then? Well, you gotta get it off you and you don't wanna take it off with your hands because if you go to put it like this, it's gonna spread. And then you're gonna be attached to your hands, which is gonna be attached to your thigh. Well, so, Jen, she's, she's going. What? There you go. No way. Yep, as you soon do. as you see it, Grab it and pull it off. Whew. All right. Well, you know what? She's a professional. So I'm going to guess that Jen already knows about this. So I she should so. be all right. She's never going to get this through TSA, though. Hey, Greg. Hey, Tommy. How you doing? Nice to see you. How you are too. you? Thanks for coming. I like your house. Small Thank you very house, much. but very nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so my wife and I have been here about a year now. Mm -hmm. We've been trying to knock off a few little projects and everything. But there's one project in particular that I wrote in about. Our gutter problem here. Oh yeah, you definitely have a gutter problem. There's no end caps here. Brackets falling off. The spikes are coming out. Uh, this joint definitely looks like it will leak. <laughs> and oh, and there's no brackets on that gutter. Well, you have a outlet for a downspout. Uh, then again, no downspout. Yeah, so this is a project that I really wanted to tackle myself. Um, the downspout being one of the biggest problems though, the water coming down, pooling here, I'm concerned about it getting in the basement. So oh, I said, yeah. oh, why don't we switch it, put the downspout in the driveway, but then, you know, the winter, the ice. Yeah, you don't want that. So either. I'm really hoping you might have some alternative for me. Well, you know, a lot of people will want to take the gutters off. They don't want to deal with them. They think they're a problem. They got to clean them and everything else. But they're important to protect the house. Water coming off the roof gets into the gutter and then it's dispersed away from the building, like downspout. If you take that gutter off, the water coming off the roof hits the ground, splashes back, hits the siding, it could rot the siding and even your sill. But in this situation, you know what, I have an idea that we can put something up here that will take the water off the roof, hit that, and then disperse it so you're not getting splashed back onto the building. All right. All right, you want me to get some tools and Let's we can get started. It. All right, Greg, you ever see anything like this before? Never. Well, I'm going to call this a gutterless gutter. A gutterless gutter, all right. All right, it's actually a louver, and you can see it right here, and it will mount to the fascia board on these brackets right here. Now, as the water runs off the roof like a waterfall, it'll splash onto the louver. Because of the angle of the louver, it takes that water that's coming down and turns it into raindrops and pushes it away from the building. Okay. Okay? So, first thing we need to do is remove your old gutter and mount the brackets. Let's do it. Okay. We've got these spikes. These are called spikes and ferros, which is just a long spike that goes through a tube. We're going to try to work those out. They actually use drywall screws, and that's a no-no. You shouldn't be using that. Okay, before we install the louvers, I want to correct a problem that I see done wrong a lot. See this piece of metal right here? This is called a drip edge, and it's designed to break the surface tension from the water that falls off the roof. So what exactly is surface tension? Well, it's like adhesion. So a lot of people think that when the water comes off the roof, it'll fall straight down. Well, a lot of it does, but some of it actually sticks to the shingle, and it will run up and hit the drip edge, 
and then run down. If there's nothing to stop it, it will continue to stick to the fascia board, run under, run down on the fascia board here, rotting the siding and the fascia board. So what I want to do is create a gap or a space right here at the lower edge of the drip edge. So if the water comes down and around, it will fall down straight. So all I need to do is bend this out about a quarter to a half an inch all the way down the roof. A couple of last things I want to do. There's no finished trim piece here, so I want to fill that gap right there with some caulking. And I also want to just touch up these holes where the spikes and furrows were, hopefully stopping some water from getting it behind. All right, we're going to start mounting the brackets to the fascia board. We're going to come in 10 inches from the end, 30 inches to the center, and another 20 inches for the other end. Now the manufacturer wants the bracket mounted to the fascia board as far down as you can get it. They want a minimum of four inches from here, the top of the louver, to the bottom of the edge of the roof. They also want it to be inch and a half to two inches from the fascia board to the leading edge of the roof. So when the water falls off, it'll splash onto the louver. Okay, ready to screw that into place. Okay, now we'll see if we can get the louver in. And then we just push this back in, clip it. Okay, put that in. And then that one. That's it? That's it. Three more to go, and we're done. Good. Push hard. All right, Greg, everything's in, and it feels like we're going to get some rain, but I don't want to wait for the rain, so let's try it out. All right. Now, we'll spray some water up on the roof, but this could be like a heavy rain. So my guess is that it's going to run over and past it. It's when it slows down, we'll see what happens when it hits the louver. See, it's starting yep. hitting the louver, and it's pushing it right out. That's pretty cool. It's great. Working good. Listen, thank you so much for your help. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider, a new streaming service from This Old House, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app. And join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Boy, I don't know, Tommy. I mean, I love the fact that it kicks the water away from the sidewall, but all these years we talk about catching the water and moving it away from the house, and it's all just dropping right next to that garage. Well, it was a pretty tight spot, and it had good drainage down there, and you're right, water should be kept away from the foundation. So when the water drops down, you can always put a French drain above ground in there right. and a pipe to get the water away. So on a big house, we would probably have a drainage system down on the ground? I would say so, yes. Okay. All right. So the key is that the, the manufacturer wants to make sure that the, the water comes off the roof and hits the center of the louver or as close to the louver as possible. So they're worried about the distance between the edge of the roof and the edge of this fascia right here? Exactly right. And that distance has to be no more than two and no less than an inch and a half. Right. So if your roof 
is closer to the fascia board, they make an extender right here that you oh, can nice. screw on the fascia board, and that will kick the edge out right. so that when the water falls, it falls down in 10 to the center louver. They're also particular about the mention from here down to the top of this louver, right? It's got to right. be down a certain height. What if you don't have enough fascia to fix it to? Well, if you have a narrow fascia board, they make a bracket right here that can be screwed to the bottom of the fascia board, and you can adjust it down as needed. Again, they want it further down, the better it is. It comes off the roof, the water splashes in there, and then disperses. Yeah, I, I know you're always trying to protect against the effects of surface tension, and the drip edge, I mean, you hate the fact that it's touching the fascia. That's just a pet peeve of yours. Because the water is the enemy. It'll come down off the roof, it'll stick to the to the fascia board as it falls if there's not a space here. So I just like that gap to be at least the thickness of my fingers, so when the water comes down, it won't stick to the fascia board rotting it. And your fingers are pretty thick. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so you built this one, and so this is the distance that you like to see. And here, you've got it not just on the fascia, but you've got it going up the rake as well. Wherever there's a transition from the surface, it should always be the, uh, a space. Like a windowsill, for example. An angled windowsill, the rain comes down on the windowsill, hits the, comes off, hits the leading edge, and it wants to go back up. Right. If you look under that windowsill, there's usually a dado. Yeah. And that dado is a, is a groove that when the water comes down, it hits that groove, it drops it away. It drops wow. away. All right, good information as always. Thank you. Yep. Hey Ross. Hey Kevin. Playing with your energy monitor there? Yeah, we looked at this technology last year on Future House. It's an energy monitor that connects to the two hot leads on your home's electrical panel and then transmits data about your power consumption via Wi-Fi. It's giving you a snapshot of what the house is using for electricity. It's also giving you device by device. It's actually learning the right. signatures of the house. And my brother and I bought one for our Father's Day. Oh, lucky him. So huh? finally a Father's Day gift that wasn't a hand tool or a tie. <laughs> I got my dad a nice bottle of scotch. You don't like the ties? <laughs> this is what happens when you come from a family of so, plumbers. So I have a house that was built to all the energy standards, highest energy standards in 2004. We put this thing in, I turn on the switch on the can, recessed cans over the kitchen island, and we watch this thing spike by like 900 watts. Wow. So these were recessed halogen lights. They were, I thought they were efficient, they aren't. So now what that does is it all of a sudden made me start thinking about, boy, I'm gonna leave those lights off. And uh, maybe screw in some LEDs, because <laughs> right. now those are efficient, That's you can right. use those. Right. And one of the other things was with the coffee maker. You know, you think, you know, it's a pod style, you think it's actually going to be, you know, only on when you're using it, but in this case, it's actually cycling. We could see it on and off. Right. We could see a, a spike on, spike off. You put the pod in, you press brew, and it comes on. Right, right. but it's got a little heating element that keeps that little reservoir, this electrical element that oh, keeps really? it on and off all day long. So when I leave, I make sure I turn that blue button off so I'm not doing it. This is, this is a typical spike right here, just for the coffee maker. So, I mean, this is the idea, right? Without the information, you can't fix the problem or change the behavior. Right. So now this is starting to change your behavior. That's right, right absolutely. Now. I remember, though, the thing that got you excited was the ability to sort of foreshadow problems, right? You guys were seeing, was it a furnace that was cycling on and off and yeah. you are afraid it was going to break down? So we saw a furnace that took three ignition cycles to start when it should only take one. Right. And so that can be indicative of a problem. What, you know, what was cool about this is the refrigerator. Right, we saw the refrigerator was on all the time. It was drawing 1,300 watts when it was cycling. No, to the fridge. <laughs> no, it, it, the compressor just would not shut off. But we found out that the filter on the front that pulls all the air in was completely clogged. If no air goes in, it's not going to take the heat away from the refrigerator, yep. and the compressor will just stay on, 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 and won't cool the box. So now you've got the information That's to solve right. the problem. Do you foresee a day when <laughs> nerds like you don't have to buy it and nerds. install it? No, I mean I mean it's stayed in a loving way, but where it actually just is built into the technology? Yeah, I, I see a day in the future where that type of device will be installed standard in any electrical panel. And what's great about that is that it's gonna send you a text message or an mm. email saying, your refrigerator is using 35% more electricity right. this month right. than it did last month, right. right? Something might be up. If and when that happens, it's standard. Then and only then will we actually change behaviors and reduce electricity consumption. Which would be a good day. Absolutely. Although you'd be left with one problem, and that's what do you do for Father's Day? <laughs> Back to the ties. <laughs> I'll take the scotch. Scotch would be nice. <laughs> Now you can watch This Old House and Ask This Old House anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovation, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. Best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today.
My favorite landscape designs are those that mimic nature. To get inspired, sometimes you just gotta get out there and take a hike. South Mountain Park is a 16,000 acre natural preserve just south of downtown Phoenix. And I've come here to check out the natural, undisturbed desert. That's so cool. Nothing's really clumped together. There's no patterns. It's almost like a mulch, but it's all, it's all just tiny pieces that have been just broken up over time. So many people think the desert's just flat. This is a very hilly terrain. The challenge for any designer is that you cannot replicate nature exactly in a suburban lot. What I like to do is take cues from the natural world and try to integrate them into my designs. Here in Phoenix, I'm working with Rod Pappas, who's a local landscape contractor, to do just that. So Rod, we have a blank canvas here. Is this typical of a landscape in Phoenix? Yes, it is. It's uh, very typical of somebody's front yard who may have had turf at one time, covered it up with some sort of weed barrier, put granite down, and called it a day. Right. Well, the only thing I see here is this honeysuckle. It's uh, blocking the window. It's causing some security issues. We're going to do away with it. All right. We could do that. Hi. Hi, Shoshana. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. Hello. Hi. So when you, for, so when we all spoke on the phone, we talked about wheelchair access for your mother, right? Right. Because my biggest concern is always to get my mother out and get her to the street. Right, right. Once we learned about that, we decided to It'd be best if we built a natural looking walkway out of pavers. So we're going to come off of this sidewalk here, come out here a ways in about middle of the yard, start curving in, and then back out again and eventually meet up with the sidewalk okay. here. It's going to be easy now for them to roll either a gurney or a wheelchair or whatever they want back and forth. It'll be plenty of wide for accessibility. Wonderful. That sounds Which great. is very, very important. Yeah. So another thing in the plan, we are going to use native plants, try to take cues from nature, what's going to grow successfully here. Um, and another thing we're going to incorporate are boulders, which are oh. indigenous to this area. That's so, great. but we first have to get started and take that honeysuckle out. Okay, I'm going to scrape some of this rock off, and you guys can dig the dirt underneath, okay? Once we get some of this green scraped away. Okay, we've got a rough outline started here for our walkway. It's going to be about three feet wide, so we're going to dig down about three or four inches, clear off that granite, haul it away, and put it to the side for future use. So your yard is very flat, and what we want to do is mimic the foothills of the mountains nearby. So we're going to create these mounds that are about four feet wide by about eight feet long, six or eight inches high, just to add some undulation to your landscape. Before we place the boulders, we're going to dig out an indentation about the size of the boulder, go down about three or four inches. So it looks like the boulder's been sitting there for about a thousand years. I'm going to dump it, ready? Yeah. Okay, so now we have three mounds throughout the property and boulders have been placed. We've also staged all the plants and we like to stage the plants so you have the ability to adjust them or move them around or tweak them, unless you absolutely love it. What do you think? I'm in love with it. Yes. It's amazing how much color you can get from desert plants out here. Like this red yucca right here, this is gonna bloom like eight months out of the year. You'll have multiple stalks out of here and it goes with your mailbox. Love that touch, that's awesome. Um, over here, we have some lantana on the ground. It's a perennial, and it's gonna cover this ground with this beautiful yellow flower for most of the year. And oh, that's one, wonderful. Yeah, one plant goes a long, long way. Hey guys, look over here. A bougainvillea. Have you ever seen one of these before? Well, I grew up in Florida, so I see them all the time crawling over walls. Uh -huh. Well, this one's not gonna do that because it stays close to the ground. It's a compact variety, only gets about two or three feet tall and that's as big as it gets. So just like a mound on the just ground? For, just like a ground cover mound, yeah. And that color is amazing. Oh, that's yeah, neat. And this is our anchor tree of the whole design, the Chilean mesquite. This is gonna be the biggest plant eventually on this property. It, um, it's thornless, as you can see, has a very airy, delicate type leaf to it. 
and you've got a few of them in the neighborhood. Actually, don't you? these are one of my favorite trees because they, the as the years go on, the bark actually starts to turn. We got some barrel cactus over here. These are called golden barrels. They do very well with a little water. The color in these is the thorns and the crown. You very rarely see any blossoms on these, but be careful handling those. They will bite. Well, I'm going to let you plant these. Okay. For, okay. A couple more lantana. Then we have some agave augustinas, and um, they will actually multiply and shoot out additional pups, what we call them, from the sides. Mm -hmm. After about seven, eight years, they'll send up a stock that blooms a nice bright yellow. Yeah. And that's the end of their lifetime. And so, then the plant will die? That's right. The plant will die, but it leaves behind a family of young ones that will continue to grow. All right, well, let's get these in the ground. We're cutting away the plastic on the outside here because we want to still keep the rest of it intact to serve as a weed barrier. When we're digging this hole for the plant here, we want to keep the hole about twice as big as the original container. The key to planting a cactus is to protect your hands from all those thorns. And I have a piece of cardboard that I'm going to wrap around it while I try and work it free of the container. So we're ready to start with the walkway and uh, what we did first to prepare for it was to excavate down about four inches. We backfilled it with a quarter minus granite which is one quarter inch smaller. We leveled it and then we went over with a plate compactor. All right so here are our pavers. These are all modular but we picked the color to have earth tones in it. I like the color but are we going to have any concern with my mom in the wheelchair getting through? No, there's, they're going to fit together really close. There's not going to be any mortar joints, so we're talking about maybe a sixteenth of an inch in they're between those joints. Real tight? Okay. Yeah, so there's not going to be any divots that you're going to fall into. Okay. This is going pretty fast. Well, there's modular bricks, and as long as you have the proper base that we put down, it's going to fly. Oh, I love these colors. I know, you really could tell the yeah. color scheme when it's all laid out. That's why if you're ever getting samples for a job, get at least five so you could, uh, really get a sense of what the true palette is. Okay, Jen, we're going to use this piece of pipe measuring the distance from that border there to the edge of this pipe. All right. And after we get that, I'm going to put this brick on there to hold it in place. So now we're ready to move on to the next spot. Okay, we're going to trace this line of PVC with a pencil on top of the brick and then come back with a wet saw and cut it after we remove the pipe. Okay, Shoshana, the landscaping's all in. We watered it in really good with the hose, soaked it down. Um, you'll probably need to give it some supplemental water for the first six months after that. You can pretty much back off and let nature run its course with it. All right, I can do that. And I just want to say, Rod, I love this landscape. We have this walkway. It's a concrete paver, not a natural material, but the color blends so perfectly with all the stone that we put in and then the boulders and the mounds. This site this morning was flat. And now just having that undulation in the landscape and then accenting it with all the different plants and textures and colors that are going to come out, it really, really works well. This entire experience has been amazing. The yard looks incredible. Thank you both for all your help. Thanks for having us in Phoenix. You're welcome. Next time on Ask This Old House. Paint is much easier to put on than take it off. I'm heading to Sacramento to show you how to do it safely and correctly. Wow, that looks great. And I'll show you the right way to hook up No, no, your... no, no, no. I'll do this to you. I'll show the right way to connect water to a, to a refrigerator with an ice maker. <laughs> Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.